So my name is Larry and I'm from Dragon Edge Group. And the person I'm going to introduce has shaped my career literally from the very beginning. And I mean that literally because when I, grad when I was in college, I had this course. Uh, it was named BS Management of Applied Chemistry. And the usual reaction I get is, when I mention my course is, ano yun? <laughs> and actually, I shared this course with my mentor, Dennis. And it was one of these things that I was confused in, in college. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do after. I was looking for inspiration. And Dennis was the name they kept pitching to me as, this is your future. If you graduate from this extremely strange and extremely hard course, you might just become an entrepreneur like Dennis. Uh, he had already, together with his wife, uh, Emily, established brands such as Beachot and Cycles. And I knew that there was some way, at, at the, a light at the end of the tunnel for my very, very confusing course. And someday I could be an entrepreneur like Dennis. I never expected he would be my mentor three years later. I joined Dragon Edge Group back in 2014 with literally zero experience in marketing. Uh, my previous job before joining the company, I was an accounting professor in Ateneo. I knew nothing about marketing. I didn't even know what ATL or BTL meant. All I had in my head was, what was this obsession with this strange line? But together with his wife, Emily, Dennis mentored me into the marketer that I am today. And one of the biggest lessons he taught me was, you have to fake it till you make it. And obviously, I'm still faking it till I make it. Dennis is the most intense person I have ever met. Whether it is for work or for his family, he never gives anything less than 100%. His passion is so infectious that he can rally a whole company into what he wants to get done. He has this energy with him and that push to drive, to get everyone on the same page. He never lets anything slow him down. He's so obsessed on getting something done that it becomes the only thing he talks about. He doesn't take no for an answer because he's always pushing forward. To every setback that he would get, uh, he would ask the question, what can we do next? To every mistake that we've done, and I've done a lot, he would ask, what can we learn from this? And lastly, to every big milestone that we've had, his reply would be, two bots tayo. I remember uh, very personally when I had the big breakdown when I was handling Beach Hut from the pressure of everything that I had to do. I was in the meeting and I just literally broke down and I didn't know what to do. So after the meeting, I actually texted Dennis and I told him, sorry, I'm going to get better at this. He replied, Larry, this is just the start. There will be many, many more lessons moving forward. And that's just how he is. He just never stops moving forward. And that is something I try to do every day. There were many times in my career in marketing that I wanted to give up, but he, always, he was always there to push me to get better. I swear I can even hear him sometimes pushing me in my dreams. <laughs> Larry, wake up. It's summer. Let's get work done. As a mentor, Dennis never ceases to teach. From the start, he has guided me all throughout. He never relies on his own personal biases, though. He is a student of the world, reading so, so many things and attending so many seminars. I even remember my first business trip with him, that I brought a book so I could impress him. I brought it on the plane, and I fell asleep. But Dennis was beside me, reading, and we were in the same hotel room, and he was still reading. Suffice to say, I had read nothing of that book, and I was deeply embarrassed. His thirst to learn, learn, learn translates to what he's doing in the office now, which is to teach, teach, teach. Dennis has always had a bias for action. Speed and sense of urgency are things he values a lot. 
He has taught me to get things done fast because there is no better time than today. I'm sure you've heard this one version or another when you ask him, kailan siya kailangan? And some would reply, kahapon. From the concept of our sending Beachot into space and from its launch date, it only took us three months. And from initial finalization of a product, it only takes us three months to launch it. And that's how fast we want to be in this ever-changing world in the Philippines. Lastly, Dennis is not just a mentor to me, and he is not just a friend as well. Dennis together with Emily, I think, are my family because they know what I've been through and they know what I'm going through. They know if I have problems, they know what, I going, what, I, what I'm feeling that moment, and they genuinely care. They know what lessons I need to learn and what things I need to improve on. Because to them, business is personal. In my four years in DEG, I've not, I have not just grown to respect and admire them, but I've also learned to love and appreciate. Dennis has guided us to where we are today, but we won't stop here because every day we keep moving forward. And with that, uh, put your hands together for our Chief Evangelizing Officer, Dennis Balahadia. Our first Mansmith Smith Market Masters Awards winner is Mr. Dennis Balahadia, Chief Executive Officer of Dragon Edge Group. Thank you, Larry, for that very kind introduction. I want to thank you and Cherry for nominating me for this award. During a vacation 13 years ago, my wife and I wanted to start a business because we had a growing family and we wanted a reason to go back to Boracay. I was holding her hand and we were walking in the pristine, white, soft sand of Boracay. Little did I know that that would lead us to Beach Hut and that would lead us here tonight. Personally, I prefer to be in shorts and slippers, but dressing up tonight, I think, is a wonderful exception. I, I am humbled by this award and just being on the same stage uh, with business greats, Rosa, uh, Robert, and Ken, it's truly an honor. When Josiah texted me about this award, I asked him uh, where he and Chiki get the energy to be prolific in their advocacies and programs. He replied, we only have one life to make a difference. Thank you for making a difference in all our lives. Thanks for organizing this event so we can pause spend time with people dear to us and to celebrate. Dearest Dexters, that's what we call ourselves in DEG, thank you for believing in our dreams and for dancing passionately to our craziness. To my brothers, Lloyd and Dick, thank you for uh, our childish suntukan when we were growing up. It made us tougher, it made us closer. To my second parents, Mama and Papa, thank you for your trust and ending support and guidance. To my parents, Mom and Dad, 
Thank you for raising me and always reminding me to be a good person, to do the right thing. I always strive to be, I always try to do, following your footsteps. You've reached success beyond measure, and a big part of it is because of your generosity and kind heart. To my kids, Nico, Erica, Polly, Rina, and Santi, I'll let you in on a secret. Waking you up every morning and bringing you to school is my first job. That's my real job. Going to the office is my second job. Thank you for being my best friends. I noticed that when people have happy homes, they are happier in the office and they are more productive. You really can't compartmentalize life. As Mother Teresa said, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. And to my beautiful wife, Emily, Thank you for being my song. The soundtrack of my life has the sweetest melody because of you. Working together as husband and wife may not be for everybody, but when it does work, it makes magic. The award is yours as much as it is mine. Thank you for believing in me for bringing out the best in me. I love you. Yes. I also want uh, to dedicate this award to my mentor and friend who recently joined our creator, Professor Tommy Lopez of AIM and Ateneo. Prof, salamat. I offer this award to you. Our first summer selling sunblock Beach at Sunblock taught me a very special lesson. We had excess stocks after the summer run, and stores were returning the good stocks, telling us to go back after the next summer. So there we were in a basement office, a very small group of young, brand new, and inexperienced Dexters, with a lot of sunblock, nothing to do, <laughs> taking shelter from the heavy rain outside. We tried really selling to the stores, but they wouldn't listen. It was really raining. I thought about closing the company and reopening the next summer. But we couldn't do that to our employees. They were really good people, and they worked really hard. So we gathered as a team, all 10 of us, to discuss the problem and come up with ideas. I gave my inputs. She gave her input. He gave his. And after some time, we came up with the best solution. Let's go global. We didn't know any better. So armed with three SKUs, we decided to launch to the world. It's not that we had nothing to lose. It's more like we had nothing to do. And we had too much stocks. <laughs> A quick Google search, thanks Ken and team, and we quickly learned that when it is raining in the Philippines, it is dry and sunny in Bali, Indonesia. When you feel the whole world is dark, wet, and raining, move. It's sunny somewhere else. Instead of giving orders, I prefer asking for volunteers. I remember asking my team, who among you here would like the adventure of a lifetime? Several hands went up, and I got two young, ambitious, capable men, gave them company-sponsored backpacks, rubber shoes, passport, and plane ticket. One is flying to Bali, Indonesia, and the other to Phuket, Thailand. We filled their backpacks with beach hut, and the remaining part would be their clothes. The matching orders were don't go back until you finish selling all of your sunblock. And they were scared. It was their first time to fly abroad. They do not speak Bahasa or Thai. We had no local contact in their destinations. And they will never see their family again. 
Unless, of course, they're able to sell all of the sunblock. Two months after Beach Hut was available in 60 stores in Bali, and another four, man, uh, four months, we landed stores in Bangkok, Thailand. I learned the power of having a dream. And I also learned that believing in people and challenging them is the best way to reach our dreams. I'm very fortunate to have met mentors in my life, people who were patient with me, who took the time out to make me a better marketer, a better person. Real mentors will give you pain. It is part of the fuel for growth. The best mentors are also your tormentor. And I've always been watchful of a pattern I see with my mentees. First, they get really excited with the project. Next, they get, they get a little bit overwhelmed. And after that, may lagnat na. <laughs> it gets really interesting after. Some will quit, and that's all right. But some will not quit. They will wrestle with the challenge. They will persist. They will continue to try and to fail, and to try, and to fail, and they will grow. Emily and I had the opportunity to attend classes at Kellogg Northwestern University. And I had the brilliant professor who I approached frequently, and he would always give me the smartest, most intelligent of answers. But I wouldn't call him a mentor. There was something missing. Talking to him was like talking to Wikipedia. The answers were all correct, but it was empty. It was transactional. Real mentorship is not just about knowledge transfer. Equally important is the other part, to care. Real mentors give a part of themselves. It is less an intellectual process, but more like gift giving or blessing someone. You want the other person to grow. You care. You love. It is not transactional. Real mentorship is tough love. It's very similar to parenting. To those with children in the audience, you can give them all the things they want under the sun. But we all know this leads nothing but spoiled brats. For our children to be successful, we must guide them just enough so that they can do it on their own. That they can stand on their own, run on their own, fight fights on their own. My children are my greatest, most important startup. Unlike my other startup projects in DEG, I can't do a cut loss or a write-off if one of them don't work out. That's why we must be thoughtful that we spend time with them to challenge them, to nurture them, to love them. I side with Clayton Christensen when he said that management is one of the most noble professions. Engineers make bridges, chefs, make food delicious. We, as managers, have the opportunity eight hours every single day to make people better versions of themselves. Continue to challenge, continue to love. Thank you and good evening. Thank you.